Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to describe basically what groups are for and why you choose the axioms the way you do. Okay, uh, so the main thing to understand is that groups, so we've seen examples of groups like the integers, the rationals, the reals, and those are all examples of abelian groups, right? Hmm? We haven't yet really seen examples of non-abelian groups. Well, maybe you've seen matrix groups and things, but we haven't really understood why why we don't assume commutativity but now i want to explain that so groups the main raison d'etre i guess that's the french word but the main reason for groups is that they are describe the symmetries and the transformations of of various structures so let me take a simple well not really very simple but it's a small sized example so let's say you have three boxes you have box one and I put a label A on top of that box two, the label B and box three, put a label C. Okay. Now I can do various symmetries which involve changing the labels on these boxes. Okay? Interchanging. So so one symmetry I can do is I can interchange labels A and B. So what will box 1 be labeled now? A. Box 2. A. And box 3. Same. C. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I interchange uh, B and C. So what happens? What does box 1 get labeled? C. Box 2? A. And box 3? A. Okay, good. So I've done these two symmetries. The first one or two transformations in a particular order, right? Now suppose I did the same two transformations in a different order. So start out with the same thing. Okay. So the starting position is the same. Okay, but now I want to I want to do the transformation this one first. So what do I get? What are the labels now? A C B. Now I interchange A and B. What do I get? B, C. So the A and B get interchanged, the C remains the same. So you get C, A. And now what do you notice? These two answers are not the same. Mm -hmm. So when you are thinking of symmetries of structures, then the order in which you do the, these transformations, like switching things, matters. It or it could matter. So this is an example of something which is not commutative. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or can you give an explanation of why it's not commutative? Well, what's really happening is that when you do one one transformation, it changes the sort of setting within which you are doing the other transformation. Okay, so it's it's really like each transformation changes the backdrop of the next one. And so that, that's the reason why they don't commute. Okay, but the point is we don't have commutativity when we are dealing with transformations in general. Sometimes we do, but that's just a good, uh, like a lucky situation. Okay, so, so this is okay. Why not commutativity? Okay, now why associativity? So if we are not assuming commutativity, why do we assume associativity? Well, okay, remember these groups are meant to capture transformations of a structure, okay, which means functions from, from a set to itself, okay, right? Now, function composition is how you will multiply elements of the group. Now, is function composition commutative? 
is a composite of two functions f composed g is that always the same as g composed f no no okay and that's sort of the reason why we don't have commutativity right when you compose functions they don't commute that's sort of what we did here uh, associativity on the other hand when you associate functions they always associate so f composed g composed h is the same as f composed g composed h right what it's saying is that that like you have these three actions. The, remember, you always start the action on the right. So you start with doing H, then you do G, then you do F. Okay? So F compose G means you do G, then do F. Right? And F compose G compose H means you do H, then you do G, then you do F. This is saying you do H, then you do G, and then you do F. How you parenthesize them doesn't matter. Okay? So... May, uh, so may, maybe it's like if you think of it like you're you're using some recipe to cook something, right? If you have two operations, one of them says cut the fruit and the other one says boil the fruit, then cutting and then boiling may not be the same as boiling and then cutting. Okay, they may not give the same effect. But if you say wash, cut, and boil, then whether you do wash and cut in one thing and then you boil or whether you do wash, then cut and boil, it doesn't matter. So how you parenthesize doesn't matter. But the order in which you do the operations does. Okay? That's why we have associativity, but not commutativity. Okay. Now, why do we have closure? Why do we assume that it's, that uh, when you multiply two things in the thing, you get something in the thing? And why do we have identity elements? Like, what's the point of closure? Hmm? Closure. Well. I don't know. Well, it's sort of just for completeness, right? It's sort of saying that if you can do certain transformations, you should also be able to do any transformation you could do by doing them one after the other, right? Mm -hmm. If you can do some rotation and you can do another rotation, you should also be able to do anything you get by composing those. And because you're trying to get like all the symmetries of a structure, okay? Mm -hmm. And whenever you have two symmetries, you can definitely multiply them and get a new symmetry. Now, why identity element? Why do we waste waste one element of the group as the identity element? I mean, the identity element is uninteresting. Right? It's just saying do nothing. This is a do nothing. It's like the identity map for functions. Why do we waste an element of a group on the identity element? Now, sure. Well, it's sort of, if you want closure, you should want the identity element. Because think of it like this, you have, you have some symmetry and then you do the symmetry in reverse. If you don't have, if, if you don't have the identity element, you'll, you'll, you'll have difficulty getting closure. Right? So suppose I had this interchange AB operation. Hmm? Okay? And if this is in my group, then, but if I do this twice, what happens? If I interchange A and B, and then again I interchange A and B, what happens? What do I get? get what, where you started. You get where you started, which is what the identity element is trying to capture. Right? So, if you want closure, it's, it's good sense to have an identity element, because that's what will make sure that when you compose things which sort of reverse each other, you get that. So, the identity element makes sense. So, the idea is you want sort of all symmetries. That's the key. Right? So you cannot sort of ignore them, ignore the identity element, or ignore the ones you're not interested in. You really want all symmetries of a structure. What about inverses? Well, the the keyword here is symmetry. Symmetries sort of means it's invertible. So let's look at. Add this uh, example again, or let's look at some other example. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's look, let's look at this one. So here, if you if you did some operation on on the set, okay, and it's not invertible. So maybe what you do is you just like throw out the label B. Right, so suppose you did another operation on this set, which 
just throw out B to put A in its place. So what do you get? You get 1A, 2A, 3C. Right. Now this is not really a symmetry of the structure. Right? Because you are actually losing information. You cannot get back to this from here. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so in this and this is not a symmetry. Because we lose some information. And so what we really want the group to capture is we want it to capture things where we don't lose information. Which means if we have a symmetry, we should be able to undo it. Okay? So this basically means you have undo capability, right? And the inverse operation of group is exactly that undo capability. And it's saying that if you have any operation, you can do another operation, which when you compose with that, you just get back to where you started. Okay, so that's why inverses. Okay, so groups capture what? What's the goal of groups? To capture symmetries of structures, transformations, which are invertible. Okay, you have associativity because when you compose op operations, it's commutative, right? Function composition is commutative. You have, sorry, you have associativity because function composition is associative, but you don't necessarily have commutativity because function composition is not commutative mm -hmm. in general. Uh, you have closure because you want to capture all the symmetries. Anything which you can do by composing things sh which are symmetry should also be a symmetry. You also include the identity element because if you have closure, you should be putting an identity element. And you have inverses because you want to capture only the symmetries which can be inverted. That's what it means to be a symmetry. Okay. So now final question is why do we have an abstract definition? Why don't we just define a group as symmetries of a structure? Hmm? I don't know. Well, uh, that's actually a hard question because for about a hundred years, people defined groups as symmetries of structures. They didn't have an abstract definition. They didn't have that definition of a set with three operations or a set with a binary operation satisfying three conditions. So this is a hard question. In the sense that, that a lot of people thought in the beginning that it's just enough to think of symmetries of structures and not have an abstract definition. Okay? So from like 1770 to 1880, people defined groups, or they didn't actually bother to define groups, they just said a group is any collection of symmetries of a structure. Well, that's, that's abstract, abstract to me already. Well, if the structure is actually known that, like they, they said, the symmetries of this structure, like the rotations of a circle. That's a group. Okay, so, so it, for any portrait structure, it's not abstract. Well, it's less abstract. But then, but then they realize that, that actually there's, there's different structures which look very different, but their symmetries behave the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay? So you could have, have this thing where you have boxes and labels, or you could have the geometric symmetries of an equilateral triangle where you can do rotations. The orientation preserving symmetries of a, of an equilateral triangle, and though these are structurally they look a little different, they are as groups they behave the same way. Okay, so you have the same group appearing as symmetries of different structures, and in order to capture that that it's the same group, you needed an abstract definition of of group, and that's why people came up with an abstract definition which sort of captures just the group structure and doesn't talk of the set it's acting on, so that now the same group can act in different structures. So it's like the, this definition, the or rather the symmetries definition, is like, is like defining, this is like defining a character in a movie. Right? So each, when you have a, uh, when you have a structure and you're looking at the symmetries of the structure, that's like defining a character in one movie. And the definition of group, on the other hand, is like defining an actor. So now this actor, which is a group, can now act in many movies, right? This act, this group can now 
act on many different sets in different with on different structures. The abstract definition allows the same actor to act in different movies and still be able to say yes, it's the same actor. Okay. Okay. 